there is one classic freshwater animal whose effects on the natural environment are far from subtle. In fact, they've always been hugely controversial. The beaver, an animal with the ability to build its own habitat, a bit like us humans. Its view of Britain is going to be especially fascinating because, having been extinct here for some 400 years, it's now on the verge of being reintroduced. So let's take a look at what makes a beaver a beaver. This one, Peter, is a babe in both senses. It's a youngster, of course, and it's beautiful. Well, he's about 14 weeks old, this little fella, so he's still very much a youngster, and that's why he's still quite chilled and happy to yeah. be held like he is. He's got all the beaver features, though, already, he? certainly he? has. He's just a miniature version of the adult. Look at these back feet. I mean, look at that spread of webbing. Can swim fantastically fast, manoeuvre really well. I know, look at this tail. I mean, this is an amazing adaptation, isn't it, really? Mm. It's a little bag of muscle in there, and that is what gives them a huge thrust. What about the teeth, though? They're, they're huge and incredibly tough, aren't they? Well, that's the business end of a beaver. Their teeth does all their real work. They're fantastically adapted. They are like two sets of chisels, constantly self-sharpening to a razor edge. What about the coat, though? I mean, this oh. is something else. These long guard hairs mm. keep it waterproof, but beneath it there's this really thick downy layer which is going to keep them warm isn't it? This is the softest most lovely fur you could ever feel and that's unfortunately why one of the reasons they went extinct. The extinction of beavers in Britain was the unhappy last chapter of a story which had started so well. Thousands of years ago, beavers may have paved the way for humans to settle Ice Age Britain, providing thick fur coats and energy-rich meat. But gradually, human demand for beaver parts escalated. Beaver teeth made excellent tools. And from Roman times, they were hunted both for castorium, the anal secretion used to mark their territory, and for their testicles. It was believed that these had pain-killing properties. And medieval humans were convinced that a desperate beaver would even bite off its own testicles, leaving them for the hunter, in return saving its own life. But the thing that wiped out the beaver was its fur. One of the last ended up as a hat for Henry VIII. In the 1600s, the beaver finally went extinct in Britain. All that was left were a few archaeological remains and place names such as Beverley, which means beaver stream. So beavers disappeared 400 years ago. But does it really matter to anything other than a beaver? After all, we humans now have aspirin. Well, it could be that the beaver still has a lot to offer Britain. In recent times, some humans of the scientist variety have concluded that the way that beavers modify the environment is good for many other species of wildlife. And to get an idea of what we might expect from a British beaver, here are some of its American cousins in action. The first thing the beavers want to do is to flood the area by building a dam. Each day, a beaver can shift 10 times its own body weight. That's 200 kilograms. As the dam grows, the water rises. But you know, they're not just dam builders. The beavers then excavate a whole network of channels, leading to a supply of trees whose bark and leaves they like to eat. Using their strong teeth, they can cut down up to 200 trees a year. They float them back to where they can build a lodge to live in. 
and raise a family safe from predators. The byproduct of all of this beaver land management is a fantastic new habitat for fish, insects and birds. So beavers hugely improve the health of the whole ecosystem. And as a consequence of that, they've been reintroduced into many Western European countries. There are only a handful of exceptions. Albania and Britain. Yes, Britain. Or to be precise, Britain with one tiny exception. An exciting but highly controversial trial tucked away in a remote part of Scotland. This is Knapdale in Argyle, Western Scotland, and it was here in May of 2009 that beavers were translocated from Norway into an unfenced area of Scotland, that is, into the wild, for the first time in Britain in 400 years. So why this part of Britain? Well, from a beaver's point of view, it's fantastic. Fertile locks surrounded by acres of its favourite food, alder, rowan and willow trees. And from the human point of view, it's miles away from any large populations. And one thing's clear, the beavers are already rebuilding the place. This may look like a pile of brash you might find at the bottom of your grandfather's garden, but it isn't. It's the structural strength of this beaver dam. And all of this flooded woodland is brilliant for biodiversity. And look at this too. The beavers have toppled this over, but already there's lots of natural regrowth, productivity. Deer are coming in and nibbling away and enjoying this. And when you think about it, we did this for years. This is just natural coppicing. And by coppicing, these beavers are creating more space, light and new growth in the surrounding woodland. But you can understand, I suppose, why some humans aren't keen. Imagine if this flooded woodland was in your backyard. Well, here in Scotland, tempers have flared. So I'm anxious to see how well these beavers are settling into this corner of Britain. I've joined Roisin Campbell Palmer of the Scottish Wildlife Trust. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the lodge, that's isn't it? Yeah. You can see it's quite well camouflaged. It's very well camouflaged. Yeah. We've waited until dusk, and we need to be extremely quiet. Wow, look at that. If that one's feeling relaxed enough, and it might even come out onto the bank and start feeding. That's fantastic. It's my first British beaver. Is it? <laughs> my first British Great. beaver. I'm so glad you've seen it. I never thought I'd see it. Really? Wow, I've lived through years of, not of delay, hesitancy, yeah. bickering. But now it's actually happening, I can't tell you, I'm so excited. It's going over to the bank. If we're quiet, we might see it come out. the strongest sign that the beavers are happy here is that they've already bred. This is a rare glimpse of one of Britain's first wild baby beavers, born 
in 2010. As long as they have a supply of water and trees, beavers can create their own habitat and live virtually anywhere. So for them, Britain is a land of opportunity, free from competition and predators, just waiting to be settled. But whether beavers make a comeback or not will depend on whether humans are prepared to share the UK with another species that likes to redesign the landscape.